Yo guys, so welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going taking the e-bikes for a first ride. Pretty exciting. I think we're gonna turn these things on and fly up and see what they're actually like on the trails. I didn't want to start on these trails. I wanted to go to Angry Sheep. Turn her on. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're just gonna go straight to Boost because that's the best way to go. Oh my. God, we are literally gonna be at the top of the hill in no time at all. Going uphill is now fun. Actually makes going for a spin or easy rides fun now. You can obviously get to the top of the hill like twice as fast. So you can do twice as much riding. 20, 25 kilometers an hour going uphill. We've literally been climbing for like five minutes and we are already probably nearly halfway up the hill. Look, there's the view. We've literally been, we've come from down there in 10 minutes from in a leaper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see ya. Bye. So many times I like overbalance because I could put a bit of power behind it like a skewer. <laughs> and it didn't fall over. <laughs> Have fun. Definitely feel the weight of the bike. Oh, you have to almost do things a lot earlier than you usually would on a normal push bike. The level of grip is insane. Like you can feel the bike trying to glue itself to the floor. experience riding the bulky track. So I just like, I don't have the strength to change where the bike's going. So I have to sort of like stay strong and commit to lines that usually scare me. So it rides more like a downhill bike and you can put in sneaky little pedals if you're an eco to go off stuff. <laughs> I think that's where the motor will come in handy, eh? When you need to like pedal wheelie off a drop or carry a little bit of speed somewhere. This is like a genuine uplift or like a shuttle run. Knee bother. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have to apologise to people going past now and saying sorry. You just literally make everything look too easy. Okay, so we're now at the top of Big Boar. This one's kind of rocky, kind of flat, janky. It's going to be okay in the drive, but it's like a challenge to keep the bike moving and carrying speed. So I think this will be interesting to see what the e-bike is like. This is going to be an interesting test for the bike. It's a lot flatter than the other trail. It's got a lot more rocks and stuff to try and slow your wheels down. Once the e-bike gets up to speed, the thing becomes unstoppable. The weight of the bike keeps it firmly planted to the floor with Velcro-like grip. It's a completely different experience to what you'd expect on a normal mountain bike. Riding tight, twisty trails is a little different too. You have to adjust the way you ride, changing braking points, your position on the bike, and sometimes line choice too. That is a proper test track. So a really good test that for bike and rider. A lot of people say that having a lighter mountain bike is better. If you ride an e-bike or you're watching this and you do have an e-bike, you'll know that weight is almost like an advantage. Like the, the bike is like 20, 25 kilos or something. And that does make you change how you ride. But the, you can actually feel the weight wanting to stick to the floor more, which is obviously giving you more grip, more confidence. You can hit lines better. So from that respect, it's really interesting. I'll follow you down it. But a hefty bike isn't always the best thing when you first jump on an e-bike. <laughs> ah, fucking hell, I hate these roots. Aside from uphills, the e-bike really comes into its element when carrying speed down the trail. Ah. <laughs> 
flat or steep, the weight of the bike keeps the momentum rolling. All you have to do is hang on to the horse and make sure it doesn't veer off course. I'm not sure about setting up on this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Because my feet were on the friggin' pedals though. <laughs> After riding some of the golfies' natural trails, we rode over the back way to Glentress to see what the e-bikes would be like at a trail centre and on the jumps. And to give you an idea of how fast these things can go uphill, we climbed 430 metres from the base of Innerleithen up to the mast in Glentress in about 20 minutes without really breaking a sweat. So, top of Glentress, I think this is the highest point at Glentress. There's literally flies swarming everywhere. We're gonna go and get away from this and try and find some tracks to ride. Zero to max speed. Again, the bike showed no signs of wanting to slow down. Carrying speed at a trail centre is key to having fun and getting the most out of the trail, and the e-bike easily checked that box. After a couple more descents, we checked out the Buzzard's Nest jump park, the perfect place to see what the e-bikes were like once in the air. Gonna try out the walk mode real quick to for pushing up. What is walk mode? So you can push your bike and it helps a little bit. It's not like pushing a truck. I press this and my pedals just start going. <laughs> and what is it doing? Taking the weight of the bike? Yeah, you've got to get it just right though. Like sometimes if you push too fast, it slows down. Or if you're not pushing just enough, it it's like you've got to like let it pull you. As you'd imagine, the e-bike is harder to get off the floor. You have to ride more aggressively and pump into the takeoffs to gain any real height. Once the bike is in the air, it's slightly harder to muscle around, but nonetheless, just as fun as a normal push bike. Okay, so that was pretty much the first day or so riding the new uh, e-bike. Pretty good fun? Really good fun. It's a completely different experience. If you're watching this and you've never had an e-bike before, or even if you're watching this and you've got an e-bike, you'll know how different it is riding a bike with a motor compared to a normal mountain bike. And I was quite nervous riding it for the first time because it's so much heavier and I was like, oh no, it's gonna be like really hard work. It's like already started improving my riding because you have to be a bit more aggressive with it. Like it just naturally happens. Just because if you want a better ride on it, then you've got to be more aggressive with it because of the weight and it just like steamrolls over everything. So you can be more confident to ride more aggressively because it allows you to do that. I think our bikes are 20-ish kilos or something like that. It's a fair jump from a normal mountain bike, but once you point the e-bike down a hill, it just literally wants to keep picking up speed. And then obviously it's harder to slow down as well. So you can actually feel like the brakes trying hard to slow you down. You feel the tires like trying to find traction. In terms of grip, that's like the biggest thing I noticed was how the bike literally wants to stick to the floor and the roots yeah as long as, not, <laughs> and as long as they're not slippy and soaking wet but the thing just wants to stick to the floor which obviously helps suspension work better and as it should kind of like riding a little bit more like an enduro motocross bike i think oh my god the mullet i was like why would you ever want to ride oh, a mullet yeah. and then obviously that's how they come and it's so much easier to ride like round the scottish tight steep turns 
It's amazing. So much faster and nicer. <laughs> yes, these bikes come standard with a 27 inch rear wheel, or 27.5 inch rear wheel, and 29 in the front. And it really does help getting around the tight turns up here. Uh, one of the questions people were asking us was, would you sell all your other bikes, just have an e-bike? I don't know, we're both pretty much the same on this, like I don't think we would. I like knowing when I'm riding my e-bike that when I go back to my regular bike, I can ride it better because I'm like learning things and gaining confidence on the e-bike, which then translates back to my normal bike without me having to do anything. So that's really cool, it's like a training tool. The other thing is like, it's really good to be able to do like a gym work, heavy gym workout in the morning. And if your friends want to go out after work, you still have energy enough to go on the e-bike to join them. So you're not missing out because you're training and also going for bike rides on the same day. It's a lot, but e-bikes help with that. I'd almost like put it in a completely different category than normal mountain biking. It's like a different sport altogether. You have to ride the e-bike completely different to a normal bike. It weighs a completely different weight. Its actual characteristics on the trail are totally different. So I don't think you can actually categorize it in the same thing as an old mountain bike. You know, everyone asking, are mountain bikes, are they gonna become obsolete and is everyone gonna have e-bikes? I don't think so yet. I think things will change when e-bikes are literally the weight of a mountain bike with a motor. Then it'll start getting interesting because why wouldn't you have a motor? But um, affordability wise, if you could only afford to buy one bike or keep one bike running, like you could just have an e-bike. Like we've been riding with friends on normal bikes and just rode an eco and it's about the same, kind yeah. about the same pace of them. So if you're worried at a cost, from a cost standpoint, then I wouldn't be, you could be fine with just an e-bike. Depends what you want to get out of the bike, I suppose. I mean, if you're literally someone who rides, who just wants to get more time on the bike, which I suppose everyone does actually, or even if you didn't have that much time to get out riding the week and you wanted like to make the most of your time on the bike, e-bike is probably one of the most efficient ways to, to do that. Like you just get God knows how many trails in, in such a short amount of time. Talking of battery levels as well, you know, how long do they last? Well, we've only had the bikes now for about a week or so. We've done some pretty big rides, right? I mean, that ride you saw on the video there where we went to Glen Trest and stuff, that was about a 50, 55 kilometer ride after we finished. And um, I, I boosted everywhere. Alex yeah. didn't. I, I was like, why would you not go on boost? Like, as long as I make sure I've got like a bar and a half of battery to get home from Glen Tress. Um, and I think I got home from Glen Tress and still went and did another lap of the golfie. So, yeah. yeah. I was a bit more conservative and like put mine in trail and eco <laughs> and stuff. But I use about two bars of batteries, which is about two fifths of the battery. Amanda was probably used more like three fifths of her battery. So just goes to show that if you do look after it and you are pretty smart about what mode you put it in, or even if you just want to just boost around everywhere, you can still do like 30 to 50 kilometer rides in a day and get so many trails in. We've actually got tire inserts in the back of the e-bike, which I would highly recommend if you get an e-bike. If you got one, put a tire insert in the back just to protect you because obviously the weight of the bike, it's going to be taking those hits a lot harder. So you want to protect your rim and just get, get an insert in there. But overall, I think we're like, stoked on them and yeah so if you liked this video give it a like and if you're not subscribed hit subscribe and the notification bell so you know when a new video comes out and drop any questions below about the e-bikes or the e-summit and uh, we'll try and get through and answer them all but yeah take care see you for more mountain bike and e-bike adventure soon